Welcome to the Burn Out to Lit Up podcast. I am your host, Erica Del Pozo, occupational therapist, certified health coach, CEO and founder of Joy Energy Time, Miami Girl, and Pineapple Lover. In this podcast, we provide the resources on how to deal with stress, burnout, and anxiety, how to get energized, find true satisfaction and alignment in your life, and more. You will learn how to slay your burnout beast and go from burnt out to a lit up life. Let's do this. Welcome, welcome to episode 10. I will be sharing 11 best ways for you to stay energized at work. And I will be sharing these tips because the last thing you want to be feeling at work is a slump in your energy. And I'm going beyond the quick fix, but things that you can implement in your routine so that you feel you're most energized at work. Today's quote is, don't mistake activity with achievement. Wow, (laughs) that is by John Wooden. I have a question for you. How many times have you, when someone asks you, how are you doing? And you say, I'm I'm fine, I'm busy. How many times have you been so busy and you mistake that for actually being productive? Man, that has happened to me a lot. Uh, How many of you have felt so busy that, and then you realize that you just weren't that productive? How many times do you leave work feeling like, oh my God, I need to take a nap? Or even wake up in the morning and already feeling like you need to take a nap. That does happen where I'm like, I could sleep for another four hours. But today we will be discussing a lot of tips around mental energy and some physical energy tips as well. But we're talking about how to stay sharp and have that high energy during work. We seem to understand that physical energy is limited. Like, I can only do so many burpees in a day. I can only work out uh, for so many hours in a day. We understand that physical energy has a cap, but we underrate how mental energy has a cap as well. I heard, like, I know him, Albert Einstein, I heard him say to me the other day, um, well, I read somewhere that he keeps it, he kept it simple and he had multiple sets of the same clothes so that he wouldn't waste his mental energy and save it for things that really mattered, you know, like developing the theory of relativity. And I used to always complain about uniforms when I was younger. I went to a private school my whole life and we had uniforms. I hated it because I was like, I want to work my own clothes and I want to be unique. But then now I think about it. I'm like, thank God for uniforms and thank God for scrubs now because I don't have to think about it. It's, it's the best. So I understand you, Albert Einstein. I'm right there with you. Uh, but seriously, he was definitely on to something. So I'm going to share something called the U of performance. The in, excuse me, the inverted U of performance. And it was created in 1908 by psychologists Yerkes and Dobson. You have the Y axis, which is the brain's ability to stay focused. So at the bottom, the brain is disorganized. And then when you go to the top, the brain is organized and able to focus. Along the X axis runs the level of stress the brain is under. So ideally, you want to be at the top of this inverted U chart where your brain is at peak levels and where we are doing our best work. So how do we get there? Well, I will share share that with you in this episode. First, let me start off by saying that some amounts of stress obviously isn't necessarily a bad thing. Having a healthy amount of stress can mean it motivates us to, and it helps keeps us on track, but we do need to find that right balance between the challenge that we're being faced with at work and our ability and confidence to tackle that task in front of us. So if we're under aroused or bored, uh, causing us not to perform at our best or we're too aroused and stressed, we're not performing at our best either. Sci- uh, neuroscientists have found that the chemical balance in the prefrontal cortex of your brain, which is in charge of decision-making, analytical thinking, impulse control, focus, organizing attention, etc., it actually changes in response to being under or 
over aroused. So that's why the prefrontal cortex is nicknamed the Goldilocks of the brain because it has to be just right so that we can work and focus at our best. So imagine the world we live in today. We live in a world made up completely, well, mostly of man-made stress. We have to meet deadlines, public speak, uh, we take on big caseloads at work, making it to appointments on time, picking up the kids, all that stuff. All these things, they're just made up. We just made them up. And can you imagine if giraffes or zebras would think of us if after running away, like what they would think after running away from a lion or a real threat, that we're still pumping out the same amount of cortisol because we have to give a presentation. Isn't that nuts to think that we made up a threat that is not a threat, but we perceive talking in front of people as a real threat. The long-term effects of having your body pump out that much cortisol over a prolonged period of time is actually worse than the stressor itself, than the thing that cause the stress in the first place. So let's dive right on into these tips so that you could have more mental energy and clarity at work. These tips just don't have to be done at work, of course, but can be applied to life in general. So tip numero uno, focus on having two great hours a day. According to Dr. Josh Davis, a neuroscientist, he says that you should focus on being great for just two hours a day. The point here is that you can't be great all the time, despite what you believe. And although we'd like to be at our best all the time, he says we should focus that energy on just being the best two hours a day. I think it's better to undershoot than overshoot. What do I mean by that? For example, I will write in my planner every day four things that I need to get done for that day and I have to tell you write it down I used to have everything that I needed to do for the day in my head and then it just gets lost so write it down and write down four things that you want to get done not five not three not two but write down four things Writing things down versus typing things on your phone, so writing down your to-do list or anything important that you want to remember is better because when you actually physically form letters, there is a greater connection in your brain, so you're more, you're better able to remember what you're writing versus just hitting the same button like your brain doesn't make the connection there so that's a little tip and there are studies that back it up back it up so if you want to remember something physically write it down second thing emails oh my god i get so many emails in a day making decisions even small ones taxes your brain so when you wake up and the first thing you do is answer your emails and hitting that send button. Yeah, it feels a little good. Like for example, I have to put my phone, my phone's volume up when I send an email because I like the zoop sound. It's so weird, I just love hearing it. And yeah, it feels good because when you hear that, when you send an email, you probably feel I'm accomplishing something and our brains like to feel that. But um, when deciding, how to respond to an email, whom to copy in, what to write, everything in that goes into making an email. Um, it's a brain game and it actually depletes our mental energy. So identifying the important emails and dealing with them is important, obviously, but don't get sucked into responding to everything automatically. Save some of that mental energy for things that really matter. I usually just go through my emails at night or if they're important, like related to work, I, I click them, I read them, I respond back. But I like setting time for that, setting aside time for emails and I don't do it the first thing after waking up because you just woke up and you're already reacting to the world. You're not giving yourself, your brain a chance 
to get grounded and you're just setting up the stage for being a squirrel and re- and having squirrel attention all day long. So, yes, anyone guilty of checking their emails all the time? I get I get so many emails a day and I can't even complain because my mom, she'll literally say, I got a thousand emails today. And I'm like, well, I, I got a hundred, so I can't, I can't top that. Um, but yeah, carve out time for that. Respond to what's important, but don't let it consume you. The emails, it's just too much. Third thing is setting aside thinking time in your day without distractions. That's the key. As, as a therapist, it's really challenging because I work with patients all day long, so I'm always talking to people. Um, but if I'm trying to do paperwork, I close the door to my office and I put headphones on sometimes. I just try to bang out my paperwork and just get it done and put my phone away from arm's reach. Uh, although I love talking and chatting with my colleagues, I understand that if I have to get work done, I have to get it done quietly and without distractions. Um, sometimes I drive, so I usually listen to podcasts uh, during my drives, but sometimes I drive without anything. I drive in silence because I'm thinking, I'm brainstorming, and I love brainstorming in the shower too. Haven't you ever noticed that your best thoughts come to you in the shower or when you're out for a walk? I love being disconnected and letting my brain just think. You know, I, I love brainstorming. I love being connected with myself and my thoughts. And um, it's important to carve out time just for, for you. You know, no distractions. So take a walk. Leave your phone behind. If um, Well, if you're walking with someone else. I If I take a walk with my husband, I leave my phone behind. But if I'm walking by myself, I have my phone. But I just try not to check it. The fourth thing, I think we're on number four, is sleep. I do my very best, and it's hard because sometimes I have a hard time falling asleep, but I try to get seven or eight hours of sleep each night. And when I do, and it's undisturbed, I feel like I'm on top of the world, right? Like, how good do you feel after you get a solid sleep? And Some people like to go to sleep late and wake up late. Like my sister, uh, she's definitely a wolf. I'm more of a bear. Um, But if your schedule forces you to wake up earlier and it's very unnatural for you, you have to really focus on setting up a night and morning routine so that in the morning you can do things that are going to alert you and bring up your cortisol. And then at night you're doing things to decrease your cortisol levels and things that are prepping you for bed. So what helps me is shifting my phone screen to night shift um, so that I don't get that blue light in my eyes, in my brain, um, if I'm checking my phone late at night or like uh, an hour before I go to sleep, I usually put it on. And I know um, if you wake up too early in the morning and it's still dark, it's it's hard because you're you're not getting that light signal. You're not getting the signal for your brain to wake up. So turn on as many bright lights as possible and get a little bit of movement in in the morning to help wake your body up. Um, I heard about this alarm clock that is a mat. I saw it on Facebook the other day, an ad for this mat alarm clock. So you have to step on it in order to deactivate it. And you can actually set it up for three seconds or 30 seconds. So like you have to stand. Imagine if like my husband, he is a big time snoozer. So I want to get this for him. I know he'll, he will never use it, but like, yeah, you, um, you can set it. So that you have to stand on it for 30 seconds to, um, and deactivate it so that's a pretty stealthy alarm clock because it forces you to actually get up um i don't know what it's called i saw it on facebook but i'm sure it is on everyone's feed because i've been seeing it a lot so yeah sleep like that tip revolves around sleep but also maximizing your routines in the morning and night so that you can sleep better and be awake better during the day I read this book. Oh, man, I mentioned it. I think I mentioned it a lot. It's called The Power of One. If you want to learn more about uh, chrono hacking, then definitely check out that book. Number five, monotask. 
Multitasking is like so yesterday. <laughs> Multitasking is not, not effective. Monotasking is the way to go. The way to go. Because think about how much of a drain it is to multitask. You're going back and forth, back and forth. And I've recently become a fan of batch working. So today is my batch day of recording podcast episodes. So I'm doing it all in one day for the month. So I don't have to go into podcast mode again. And I do certain other things in in work. Uh, I plan, I'm trying to get better at it, at batching certain tasks in one day. Because I find that my brain is on when I have to just really focus on one thing I feel much more productive instead of like doing all the things every day you know what I mean like some things you have to do every day at work but if you can batch work I like it it just makes me feel better so my mom batch works she will clean the house on a Saturday the almost the entire day, starting early in the morning, ending late afternoon. That's her batch day of cleaning. And I hated it growing up because I would have to wake up early Saturdays and clean the bathroom. I just freaking hated it. Uh, but I find, like now I see why she does that. Because then you get, you get it all done in one time. I, I'm kind of like, in terms of cleaning, I kind of like picking up a little bit here and there every day but when it comes down to actually cleaning and scrubbing the the um, tub I will do that all the cleaning stuff on one day just I I see it now I I get you mom I I get it um with certain things you might have to do you might have to space it out but wherever you can I want you to think about where can you monotask and I have been such a ninja at multitasking that I feel like my brain is fried. So now I get really excited to monotask. That's when you know you're getting older, when you're excited about being more productive. So yep, I'm almost 30. That is where I am going, being more productive. Number six, taking regular breaks okay so just because you monotask doesn't mean that you shouldn't take a break i do things in chunks uh short breaks even short breaks uh just give you a quick little boost and they're necessary so a 15 minute break every 90 to 120 minutes it seems to work best for most people and you should experiment with different schedules for me this is just a personal thing i set a timer if i'm working at home i do 42 and 18 minutes not 45 and 15 minutes um, because I think I need more break time for my brain to recharge. If I'm doing this throughout the whole day, I love it because instead of just sitting down and saying, I'm going to work, I put timers on and it helps me to track my time. So I know where my time is spent, how much of my time is spent. So when I take a break, it is totally shameless because I have these 18 minutes to take a break and then I'm on for 40 for 42 minutes. I will put my phone on airplane mode for 42 minutes. I even have to text my husband like, I'm going dark, like if you need me, email me. Um, just so he doesn't freak out. But yes, I, I like that. I'm a big fan of that. And it works for me. So I encourage you if you're more of a 45, 15 minute person, hey, you you do you. Like, if you want to do 42, 18 minutes, that's totally uh, doable for me. Um, you have to see what works for you. And at first, I was so resistant because I was like, no, I know I work and I know I take breaks. But then I would waste like 30 minutes on a single Instagram post. And I'm like, okay, Erica, get your shit together. <laughs> Let's just when we're working we're working like i'm not gonna work and then work on an instagram post in the middle of my work no no no. i have to separate break from work time number seven delegate tasks save yourself for critical issues and for the things that only you can do assign tasks to others things that you don't have to do so let your husband take out the trash and put away the dishes 
God bless his heart. Um, no, he actually, my husband will take the trash out and he washes all the dishes. I put them away because I'm not a good washer and he's very anal. So he has no problem cleaning all the dishes, but then I cook. So it's kind of fair and um, we just kind of delegate like who does what and it works for us. We have very specific roles. Roles. Man, sometimes I can't pronounce things. Oh my God, side note. I can't say the word twirl. Oh my God, okay. T-W-I-R-L. I cannot say it. Twirl. It's like the Miami accent in me is so thick. I can't say certain letter combinations. My husband's training me to say rural to rural. Okay, I said it there, but I can't say it fast. Like twirl. It sounds like I'm saying troll. You have to excuse me, guys. This is, again, I'm trying to be a little less filtered and a little more real. So I have to break that down for you just for a second. Okay. So <laughs> my husband and I have very specific roles. He edits my podcasts. I delegate that to him. I don't edit my podcast because I have to spend a lot of time recording them, writing the show notes, researching all this stuff. And he loves to be um, the technical person in my business. He works on the website. He edits my podcasts. He does a lot of that stuff. So I've delegated all that stuff to him because although I am the business owner of Joy Energy Time, and this is my brand, I need help. I can't wear all the hats and thank God for my husband or else I'd have to hire someone to help me with all this work. It really, really is a lot. And it's not, I don't need to be editing them. I could pay someone, but you know, my husband is generously helping me. So delegate tasks that you don't need to do that are taking time away from things that are going, that taking time away from things that only you can do delegating is just we don't really think about it but once you think about it you realize wow if I delegated this then I could do this so we actually did hire someone to make our website because neither of us are experts or know a thing about making a website so spending money on that even though it was a lot of money um it was very helpful because it saved us time. And I think time is so much more precious. Time is a precious resource and we will get that money back. You know, you get money back, but you don't get that time back. So we did hire someone for our website. So what if, you know, you hired someone to clean the house once a week? And what does that mean for you? That you spend those hours with your kids and that's time that you'll never get back. So yeah, it costs you money, but think about the value of delegating. You're delegating uh, the cleaning of the house in trade in exchange for spending quality time with your kids or with your husband or your wife or whoever. So, or working on your business. So yeah, it's important to think about what areas of your life are worth it. Um, we also hire, well, not hire, we, we use the app Shipped. It's a grocery delivering service. And uh, I love Publix. Publix is the grocery uh, chain in Florida and in the Southeast. But the Publix by my house just really sucks. And I live in Delray Beach, and the Publix in Miami, most of the Publixes in Miami have a little cafeteria, and you can get. Café con leche and pan tostada and croquetas while you grocery shop. But here, they don't have that. And the parking lot is really, really small. And there's 98% old people that can't really drive that well. Or it's just a really crowded Publix for really... And it's so small. So I don't like going there. So we <laughs> we use Shipped. Um, I think it was $99 for the whole year. And then someone just delivers your groceries. You put it together a list and you're in communication with your shopper and they text you if an item is missing or whatever. And then they come and they deliver your groceries. And it's like the best thing in the world. So it saves us time because we are spending that time working and moving forward with our business versus having to fight 
with old people in that really small parking lot. So it's, yeah, it's not worth it for us. So I urge you to take a look and see if you, if you say that you don't have a lot of time, if you use the excuse, I'm busy and I don't have time for for working out. What if you use that those hours of um, having someone deliver your groceries or your meals or clean your house? What if you, you use that time for you? And that's time you'll never get back. So I'm a firm believer of delegating. Number eight, snack on the good stuff. So if you want to maintain your energy levels, you got to snack. And I can't emphasize this enough because if you don't, if you're not prepared, then you get desperate. So when patients bring me gifts, whether it's for Christmas or my birthday or whatever, it's chocolate. My patients just give me a lot of chocolate and I love chocolate. You can still keep giving me chocolate. But if I go to work hungry and I get all this chocolate, I'm going to binge on chocolate and that's not good. Um, I love my chocolate and I will have a little bit every day, but having a snack at work makes me feel okay. I'm good. And I had my healthy snack and I can maintain my blood sugar levels and I'll save this little chocolate for later. I'm not eating it because I'm starving. So at work, do what works best for you. You can have apple slices with peanut butter or almond butter, carrot sticks and hummus, cheese and uh, grapes and crackers, uh, whatever it is, just be prepared um sometimes i have protein bars or a protein shake i actually drink my protein shake in the mid-afternoon quite a lot and i make it in the morning i keep it in my little lunch box with a cooler so it stays cold and i make the base like 50 percent of that shake is either spinach or kale and of course it's organic like of course <laughs> and then i use almond milk half a banana and then I use um, a protein powder. So it's pretty simple. Even though, even though there's a lot of uh, spinach or kale, it doesn't taste like it. I think the banana helps and the almond milk. So that's my go-to shake. Actually, and I'm getting, even though it's good, I'm getting a little bored. So I need some ideas for new smoothie recipes. And my husband and I are thinking about getting a juicer. So should I get a juicer? Just another little side note. Can someone help a girl out like, I have a Nutribullet, but should I get a juicer as well? I would appreciate uh, any feedback or opinions on uh, through. You can send me any thoughts to my email, which I will send. I will give you my email at the end of this episode. Okay, tip number nine. We're almost done. Stretch. Stretch. How many of you sit all day long? I can't, like, I am constantly in motion. I don't know. I don't know how people do it. I don't know how people sit all day long without moving. I can't even go to the movie theater because like I have to move so much and it, it's a problem <laughs> because I have to move. And if I'm working at home, I'm not sitting in my office for eight hours. I'm laying on the floor, sitting on the floor, and then I go in my comfy chair and then I lay on my stomach and then I'm moving all the time. And can you imagine if you stretched after sitting for so long or um, embedding moments of stretch in your day throughout your day? How is that going to make you feel? It's going to make you it's going to make you feel so delicious. It feels so delicious to stretch. So if you're sitting all day long, you are at risk for tight hip flexors, a pectoralis minor, tight hamstrings. Everything gets tight. So if you are a medical professional like me, um, most often than not, we're pretty active and we're up on our feet all day long. So um, I, I get a workout in at work just by treating kids. It's definitely a workout, um, but I still love to stretch. So when you can stretch, look up some doorway stretches. Those feel really good on your pectoralis minors. Um, move, just move and Look up some stretches. Just make sure that, you know, you're not hurting yourself. If you, if you have a bad back, you don't want to go into hyperextension. Um, just do what feels good. Uh, and as long as you're not hurting yourself. I have a little tip for you guys. So when I get home from work, I immediately lay down with my legs straight up against the wall for at least five minutes. Um, I find it's kind of relaxing. It's a really quick way to just wind down when you get home. And you're also reversing the effects of gravity on your legs and feet. 
So you're helping any stuck or stagnant fluids get up there, get up in your body, and you're using gravity to your advantage. So it's really good for your circulation. I I do this every night, and it's just a habit. When I get home, I change my clothes, I, I put my legs up, and then I eat dinner or whatever. So that's really helpful. Number 10. Okay, this tip is lame, but I have to say it. I can't talk about energy and not say it. you got to be drinking enough water. And I can say this, everyone can say this, and it's like beating a dead horse sometimes. Like, you know it, you know you have to be drinking more water, but do you actually do it? Come on, do you actually do it? Dehydration can lead to fatigue. So if we're talking about energy, um, just making sure you're hydrated is, I think, the first step. That should have been the first tip, actually. But, you know, I just love drinking water with a little bit of lemon. So if you need a little bit of flavor, um, just squeeze a lemon squeeze half a half a lemon there's um there's that what's it called Lacroix. that's really good it's sparkly water it has flavor um i have a friend that's that is obsessed with it so it's really good um just drink water it kind of feels like you're, you're drinking soda but you're not and the last tip don't have a big lunch that will put you into a coma So let's start off with having a lunch that has protein. And if you don't have, well, if I don't have protein in my lunch, I feel like a complete zombie. I know a lot of people that they hit a slump in the afternoon. So what you can do is have a lunch with more protein, animal or plant-based. I like eggs in my lunches. I usually will have an egg sunny side up over leftovers and that'll be a lunch. My leftovers are quinoa or rice with veggies and chicken or uh, ground turkey. Um, And portion size is important too. And I find that if you're eating something homemade or if you're eating something healthy, it's, I think a lot, you're, okay, if you're taking something, you're bringing something from home, it's a lot better than going out to a restaurant because that, that portion size is out of control and the calories and the extra sneaky calories in food from restaurants is out of con- out of control. So if you must go out for lunch in the middle of the week with coworkers or clients or whatever and you have to be awake in the afternoon, you have to keep working and you don't want to pass out, uh, get some protein in your lunch and keep the portion size Uh, from getting out of hand although they say that lunch and breakfast should be your biggest portions but don't like eat an entire eggplant lasagna and then and then wonder hmm I'm so tired I could take a nap what's because you ate a whole freaking carbalicious meal for lunch so keep your lunch lighter and have it so it's big enough that you're satisfied but small enough that in the mid-afternoon you're going to need a snack. I like eating every three to four hours. That's just my style. I know some people don't, and I'm not a dietitian so I, or a nutritionist, but um, I know that if I want to keep from crashing, I have to eat every three to four hours. Um, so if I eat a huge lunch and, and I'm not hungry until dinner, like on the weekends, if I go to brunch, I don't eat again till dinner. But um, I nap after brunch. So if I do that, it's kind of like a lazy day. So you don't want to have such a huge lunch during the week that you it hits your productivity and you want to keep working in the afternoon. So, yep, just listen, just follow those tips and see, look up some recipes on Pinterest, uh, see what works best for you. So those were 11 tips. I'm going to summarize them for you. So the first one is focus on having two great hours a day. Second one, keep email checking and email responding at bay. Three, setting aside thinking time in your day. Four, get enough sleep and get quality sleep. Maximize your morning and night routines for better sleep and more alertness throughout the day. Five, mono task. Six, taking regular breaks, seven, delegate tasks, eight, snack on good stuff, nine, stretch, 10, drink water, 11, have a protein-based lunch. So I hope those tips were helpful and 
if they were helpful, if you practiced some of these, send me an email at erica, E-R-I-K-A, at joyenergytime.com and give me your feedback. Also, let me know, should I get a juicer? You can also visit my website, joyenergytime.com, and subscribe. Why? Subscribe for weekly fun surprises in your inbox. Okay, my emails, you can check because they are really valuable. Okay, so you can check those emails. You're like a VIP member if you are subscribed to my website because you get all the goodness before everyone else does. So it's it really pays <laughs> to subscribe to my email list. So I have something special for you. Okay, get ready for it. I am giving away a juicy part of my online happiness mini course for free. Yes, for free. And I'm not giving you the introduction because that's a waste and I don't want to be cheap. So I'm giving you the juiciest part of my mini course. So how do you get it? All you have to do is just write a review on iTunes for my podcast, the Burnout to Lit Up podcast, and take a screenshot of that review and then send it off to the interwebs. So make sure you take that screenshot before you send it because then you will email me that screenshot. I will say my email again, erika, E-R-I-K-A, at joyenergytime.com. And then I will send you a juicy part of my online mini course for free. So what exactly is in the mini course? Why should you you do this? Well, A, I would appreciate an a review, anything honest, an honest review. I would really appreciate that on iTunes. And B, I'm going to ask you some questions. So why, so what is this mini course? Let's start by answering these questions. Why do we do things that we dislike and like the things we never seem to do? Do you find yourself influencing the world or it influencing you? Are you dealing with a lot of stress due to work and it has you feeling overwhelmed and exhausted? Are you counting down the days till the weekend because you just absolutely dread the week? Are you not setting boundaries in your life that is causing you to feel even more stressed and stuck? Yep, I know those are a lot of questions, but I don't take your stress management and your happiness lightly. I have a ton of people emailing me asking me, for help how can they de-stress and some people are sharing with me that they are literally being reactive the whole day long and they're not quite sure like they're stuck and they're not quite sure how to be happier how to be at their happiest highest self and how to keep that how to maintain that happiness I've had some people that write into me and say that they're so stressed at work but then they take it home with them and their stress goes with them everywhere they go and it just becomes this ugly domino effect so can you imagine if you could use science scientifically based evidence powerful life-changing evidence based out of occupational therapy because i am an occupational therapist and it's an awesome field and what if i could take that evidence for you and teach you some fun and therapeutic ways to manage your stress so you cannot dread Monday mornings. So you can have strategies that actually work and that you can find happiness in both big and small ways every day. Because seriously, ain't nobody got time for stress to just take over our lives and to take away from us living the lives we want to live. So what can you do if you're feeling stressed out and stuck? Okay, I'm gonna share three things with you. One, realize that by, okay, me telling you that I can help you find happiness every day. That doesn't mean that you're going to be happy every day. I don't want you to turn into this happy robot that isn't allowed to feel sad or, or, or mad or any other emotion because that's not realistic. But what I'm getting at here is teaching you where and how to find and live and have this truly satisfying life and that's the big goal. And there's things that you should do and things you shouldn't do every day that support that. So I go into detail in my mini course how to do that. Two, learning the power of your mind combined with the compound effect. Building in self-awareness, understanding your unique needs, learning what traps drain your happiness and your energy on a daily basis, and 
Finding your balance is the key to start A, managing your stress, and B, be truly happy. Okay, the last thing. You have to follow your inner compass. So reconnecting with your 11-year-old self and unplugging from your phone, it, those are the things that are going to help you get reconnected with you and what you want to do. You must be thinking, okay, this all sounds great, but how can I do this? How can I refill my tank? How can I learn therapeutic ways to de-stress my mind and my body and build a happy life, a strong foundation for a happy life? Well, if that's the case, I got you, my friend. All you got to do is write me a review on iTunes, take a screenshot, send it off to the interwebs, and then email me that screenshot at Erica. E-R-I-K-A at joyenergytime.com and you will get that juicy part of my happiness mini course for free. Have a great day, everyone. Love you all. Thanks for listening. If you want more, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. Also, share this episode with your friends and I would be so grateful. If you feel inspired, leave a review on iTunes with an honest comment and or what you'd like to hear more of so you can help me out on my journey in delivering meaningful content. Thanks, mis amores.